Are you looking for a budget-friendly pack that has all the bells and whistles while being ultra light? If so, the Granite Gear Crown 260 might be your pack. That's next. Welcome to Backcountry Renegade, I'm Jeff. Today we are looking at a very popular pack by Granite Gear called the Crown 260. This is a great pack that has a lot of bells and whistles. It's very versatile and adjustable. If you need something that just for like a small overnighter and you need a smaller pack, it can compress down nicely. But if you need something more for like extended days or winter backpacking, it can expand all the way to 60 liters. So a very versatile pack, fully adjustable, lots of bells and whistles and features. If you're looking to bring someone into backpacking while not breaking the bank, this is a worthy option to consider. Let's check it out in more detail. Now the Crown 260 comes in a 60 liter pack size as the name suggests. It also comes in either a small, regular, or large according to your torso size. This one here is the medium version. The inside dimensions are 23.5 inches by 16 inches by 8 inches. The weight for this in the medium version is 2.36 pounds, including the top lid. This is amazingly light compared to its capacity in other bags of similar size. The weight can be further reduced by removing the top lid as well as the belt structure and the internal frame. And when you do that, you're looking at a bag that's weighing less than two pounds. This pack has been a popular pack over the years and has gone through various transitions and tweaks. It has had various colors as well. The current colors are either a black or a peat. This normally sells for $199, but is currently on sale at granitegear.com for only $139. $39. The pack material is a high tenacity nylon at 100 denier and 210 denier with barrier DWR rain coating. So it's water resistant up to an extent but not waterproof and you will still need a rain cover. The load carry weight is up to 35 pounds comfortably. Now let's start in the back and check this out. Starting in the back, you have a nice grab handle here that is very sturdy and durable and can lift the entire pack while it's also loaded down. Looking at the backing here, it's very different if you're coming from an Osprey pack. You do not have the mesh trampoline back panel that separates your back from the backpack, but instead you have this rigid foam back panel. It does provide some cushion, but it allows the pack to sit really close to your back. This helps keep the pack nice and close to your body on steep ascents while also providing nice ventilation to help keep you cool. But it has these grooves that allow for vapor current is what they call it. So this is a good job for ventilation and allow some airflow, but it's still gonna be close to your back, so it will produce sweat. Over the rigid foam back panel, you also have a really thin layer of mesh. Now, this is something to just keep an eye on whenever you put your pack down, that you don't put it down on anything where this mesh can get caught because it looks like it could tear pretty easily. So just be careful about that. Inside this foam back panel here, you do have a plastic frame that really helps maintain the shape and helps transition the weight down into your hips. We will take a look at that here in a little bit. This frame sheet can be removed, lowering the weight to about 1.7 pounds if you choose to go without it. Looking at the hip belt, you do have nice cushion. Now it is adjustable. You can remove it by this Velcro on the inside, take the hip belt out, and then you can adjust the size of the hip belt needed based on your waist. The nice thing about the hip belt is you also have these really nice size hip belt pockets, which you can store uh, some snacks or even your cell phone if you choose to use that. So really nice feature with that hip belt there, and it's cushioned all the way around to provide nice lumbar support. The hip belt does clip in nicely together here, and you do have these pull strings to help tighten it as you pull it across your body uh, so it provides a nice snug fit. The shoulder straps are sewn into the pack and so they are not adjustable. So just make sure if you do go with this pack to test it out, make sure to uh, size it on to you get the right size for your torso size because once you get it, you don't have any adjustability here. The shoulder straps are nice and padded all the way down, going down to your chest from the shoulder straps as well. And so you have nice cushion padding there. You do have load lifter adjusters here at the top to provide uh, a nice adjustment fit for your load and you can bring the pack closer or further away from your back depending on your needs there. 
On the shoulder straps, you do have this daisy chain loop where you can attach other gear things. You do have your emergency whistle here, and then you also have your sternum strap here. Now, the one thing about the sternum strap is the female section here is kind of uh, stayed into this uh, shoulder strap portion here, so it does provide a bit awkwardness to try and get this part in when while you are wearing it. So just uh, be aware of that rather than having a, a cord that brings it out. It is a bit awkward, but definitely not a deal breaker. At the top here, you also have a water bladder port hole. So if you have a water bladder, uh, you can bring the cord out and strap it to your uh, shoulder strap there. Now looking at the top, you can see we do have a nice floating top lid here, which you we can also call a brain. Now this is completely removable uh, just by using these straps here. And then you have two more here in the back where you can completely remove this if you choose to. So pretty easy to use there. And if you choose to go with a little bit smaller load, you can take off this and save some weight. Now on the back of the top lid here, you do have a nice pocket here where you can store a lot smaller gear. On the top, you also have these nice little gear loops here where you can attach other things as well. To put it back on, you do have these little straps right next to the shoulder straps where they do just snap really nicely in there. So it's pretty nice. So you can uh, have quick access to that and you can attach it quickly as well. Now underneath the lid, you do have this V-shaped compression strap, and this does a good job of, of strapping down your load when it's in here, and also does a good job of having attachment points. So let's say you wanna hold your sleeping pad or snowshoes or something, you can do so with this uh, strap here. And so you, you can also just undo it to get access to the inside of your pack. Now, as you can see, this is a roll top closure. This is one of my favorite roll kind of closures here because it does a good job of keeping the elements and rain out because you're rolling it down. Now, it also provides a lot of adjustability because let's say you go down to a smaller size pack load, you can just roll this down or look how much more room you have if you need an extra big pack size. So, so you can load your pack up even higher and then just roll it down to where you need it. And how you close it is you roll it down to your adjustable need and then you just clip it in like that and then clip it down with the V-strap. So pretty handy with that. Now you can see when it's open how much room you do have in here. So you have a lot of room inside this cavity and uh, you can just store all your gear and then you close it with this roll top closer pretty nicely as well. Now looking inside here, you can see you do have a nice water bladder clip here to hang your water bladder. Now there is no separate uh, pocket for your water bladder. Uh, it just kind of has to hang there. Uh, what some people do is they will put it inside this pocket here. Now what this pocket is here for is not really for your water bladder, but it's actually to hold your frame. Now this is a plastic frame that is easy to remove and uh, if you choose to go without it, you can have your bag be nice and flexible and lightweight. But uh, this does a good job of just providing some structure to your frame and it's real easy to just put on back in there if you choose to do so. So just uh, put it in there and then you can uh, zip it back up and uh, you just have to get it nice in there as so and then zip it up and your frame structure is right back in there. So pretty simple. And you can see just how much uh, length you have with this roll top. So uh, the top of the pack is basically about right here. So you have this much more room of additional space if you choose to use it. So uh, a lot of versatility and adjustability with the roll top. So this is uh, the style I prefer on my packs is to have a roll top. All right, so just uh, putting the top lid back and we will look at the front here. You can see you have two horizontal compression straps here. So if you really want to cinch down your load nice and tight, you can do so with these compression straps. So if you're going with maybe using this just as a day pack, you have a small load, you can compress your load really nicely. Or uh, you can also use this to hang some extra gear on, maybe a sleeping pad, sleeping bag, or something like that. Underneath these straps, you have a really amazing a large stretch mess pocket. You can see how much room you have there and it is really stretchy. You can store a lot of gear. Now one downside is if your pack is pretty full and you want to store a lot of gear in the stretch mesh pocket, it pretty much renders these little compression straps 
um, unusable because then you can't really get into your uh, stretch mesh pocket if it is loaded down and you then compress it down. So something to keep in mind. But the nice thing is it is really quick to uh, remove and put these back on with these clips. You can notice the compression straps are pretty thin as an effort to save weight, but they are pretty durable. Looking at the front again, you also have dual ice tool loops, or you can even use these as your trekking pole holders. So something that is pretty nice there. Also looking at the front, you do not have any uh, sleeping pad straps here, nor do you have a sleeping bag compartment that is separate. So basically you would just put your sleeping bag all the way in at the bottom and allow it to um, get all those extra spaces here and then just store your gear on top of your bag as it compresses down. So definitely not a deal breaker and you can work around by not having to have a, a separate sleeping bag compartment. Looking at the sides, you also have these upper and lower compression straps on the sides. Now these are really nice, again, to help you compress your load to small or you can really widen it out if you wanna really load down your pack. So pretty nice. Now you also have these stretch pockets here to store your water blotter or you can even use it to store uh, tent poles. Now, if you do use it to store tent poles, one thing to keep in mind is you do not have any reinforced nylon at the bottom. So just be a little extra careful so that uh, you don't poke uh, holes through this material. Now this is a little bit different material. It is still stretchy, but it's not like the stretch mesh in the front. So it's a little bit different material. Uh, so it's probably a little bit more durable for that purpose. The cool thing about these uh, side uh, compression straps here is on the bottom one, it can go over this pocket or you can run it through on this side underneath the pocket. So you do have some versatility depending on your needs. On the bottom, you do have that 210 denier nylon here, which is a little bit more durable uh, for extra abrasion resistance there. Overall, pretty versatile pack. Lots of little features that you can use, but it's a very budget-friendly option. So let's consider the pros. The first pro is it's very affordable. This isn't a pack that's really going to break the bank coming in at just over 100 bucks if you can find it on sale and uh, it has a lot of bells and whistles and features that a lot of the premium packs might have. So very cool. And you're also supporting some of the smaller cottage companies that Granite Gear is. Another pro is it's very versatile. Uh, you can compress this down to a smaller day pack. You can also use it for a multi-day pack and extended day packs as well. Use it for winter and can expand all the way to 60 liters. Uh, you can adjust the hip belt. You can take it off. You can take off the top lid. You can even take off the frame if you wanted and really bring down the weight. So pretty cool how adjustable it is. Another pro is all the cool features that it has. It has a lot of bells and whistles like hip belt pockets, front mesh pocket, tons of compression straps, side pockets as well, and your top lid. So a lot of cool things rather than just having a big rucksack kind of pack there. Uh, a lot of cool things to store uh, your stuff if you'd like to have extra additional storage. Another pro is it's super lightweight for its carrying capacity when you compare it to other packs in a similar size. So let's consider the cons. The first con is that since it is nylon, you will need a rain cup. Now, while it is DWR finished, so it is water resistant up to an extent, it will still soak through, especially if you get rain. So you will need to purchase a rain cover. Since it doesn't come with one, you'll need to get it separately. So first con is that. Another con about this is it does not have any sleeping pad straps or any sleeping bag compartments like you would see on other packs like in Osprey and stuff. So that is something to consider. Now you can just stuff everything down there, but if you do like those sleeping pad straps to attach a sleeping pad, that would have been a really nice feature to add on to this. Another con about this pack is when, while it does have a nice front mesh pocket, if it is full, you will kind of render these compression straps that go over the center almost useless because when they're there, you can't access everything. So you'll just have to unbuckle it as you will to access that. Now, if you really load this, it is stretch meshy to really extend. So you can put a lot in there. So if you do use these, um, it's nice to compress your pack when you are using it for a day pack. But uh, when you are really loading this out, uh, these are almost useless. Another con about it, depending on how you see it, is with this uh, foam back panel here, 
it's going to be pressed against your back. So it may uh, not allow for great ventilation. You might have a sweaty back with this, but that's to be expected when you have something that rides close to your back. And for me personally, whenever I'm carrying a backpack, I tend to sweat, even with those Osprey airspeed suspension packs. Uh, but I actually prefer this to ride closer to my back, especially when you're going up hills and mountains and stuff. You don't want the pack leaning you backwards and you having that momentum that way. You want it close to your back. So that is something to consider though, is uh, you will have it close to your back and resulting in more sweat. Now, while this pack is highly adjustable, there is one thing that is not adjustable and it is the torso height based on the shoulder straps. You can't adjust it up or down like you can on some Osprey packs. So that is something to consider. So make sure you size it out and uh, try this on before you purchase it and commit to it. Uh, because once you're in it, uh, it's according to the torso size that you choose and you can't really adjust it from there. So what did you think of the Granite Gear Crown 260 backpack? Is this something you would choose for yourself personally? Or would you rather give this as a gift to someone who you're trying to introduce into backpacking? Uh, leave me a comment in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts. What would you go instead if you were not to choose this pack? If you like what you saw, make sure to give me a thumbs up. Also subscribe for more contents like this. And as always, thanks for watching. Oh,